Super excited to get to chat with Oregon Ducks legend Joey Harrington once again. And it is that time of the year, Joey. Pac-12 championship game. Ducks have taken care of business and get that opportunity to avenge their lone loss this year. I'm just curious how you see this game playing out. What are some keys to this game and keys to victory for the Ducks? Boy, um, I mean, I don't think I'm going to say anything that most people haven't already been thinking. And, and that's since that first Oregon-Washington game, um, Oregon has by far been the, mo the more impressive team. Um, you know, Washington has had continuous – has played continuous close games, you know, 15-7 to 7 against Arizona State, um, the tight one against Stanford that they pulled out at the end, the Apple Cup we saw last week. Um, and and I think the key to all of those has been Michael Penix turning the football over. And, 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 and let's just say, you know, more than Michael Penix, but uh, they had three turnovers in that first half against Arizona State. Um, you know, which, you know, a 15-7 game they pulled out at the end is, is is a tough one. Um, so I think the key for Oregon is to limit Washington offensively. You know, that has that I'm gonna say that's been the kryptonite for Washington, right? Create some turnovers. When they're rolling, they're rolling. Right. And and it can happen at any moment. But the thing about Oregon this year is is defensively, this is as good a team as we've seen. Um, I think I saw a stat that their point per game total this year is the lowest since like 1962. You know, they're giving up 15 points a game. Um, if they can hold Washington under, you know, let's call it 24, you know, I think this, this is a, um, a game that they can, I don't want to, let's just say, let's, let's limit them offensively. I don't want to <laughs> start yeah. making comments that, you know, put your foot in your mouth. Were you, I, I take it you're not really surprised then that, you know, when the odds came out and it was Oregon, such a strong favorite at nine and a half or whatever it's at now, but that's a pretty big number considering, you know, how good both teams really are. Oh, yeah, especially that Washington's undefeated and that Washington beat him the first time. But if you've watched, again, if you've watched Oregon play, and more specifically, you know, the, Oregon has been fantastic. I mean, the, the entire team has been fantastic. The defense, you know, I just said it. This is as good a defense as we've seen as a group in, you know, call it 60 years. But Bo has been special. And, and, I don't know that there has been – well, I know for sure that there hasn't been a game where he's played poorly. I don't – I know for sure there hasn't been a half. There may have been a quarter. I mean, if you technically call the start of that Washington – first quarter against Washington State, and, and by no means was it poor. It just wasn't like the standard that Bo has put up this year. He has been absolutely spectacular, like beyond spectacular. Mm -hmm. He's been – um, I, I can't even think of an adjective. So if you are looking as an odds maker, right, and comparing a a Washington team that's been pretty inconsistent since that first Oregon me meeting and an Oregon team that literally has just been grinding. Like, <laughs> and to the point that people are talking about placing, you know, the college football playoff, placing that it shouldn't happen. But having conversations about is this one lost Oregon team better than some undefeated teams? Like that's how well they've been playing the second half of the season. So no, it didn't surprise me that the odds makers came out with them as almost a ten point favorite. Joe, you kind of segued into that beautifully, and that, that's definitely a question I wanted to ask you about. Is just taking a step back, big picture. I've heard quite a few people come out and compare this Ducks team to some of the all time great Ducks teams. Is that premature or do you believe that this team is that special that it belongs in that conversation? Well, I think at this point, both of those things can be, can be true, right? The way the team is playing right now, this is as good a team as Oregon may have ever seen. However, at the same time, they still haven't won a conference championship. They haven't, 
you know, and, and, and they haven't gotten to a national championship game. Like there are still steps for them to get to that place. Is it possible for them to get there? Yes. Are they playing? Has this regular season been as good as we've ever seen? Absolutely. But I think, you know, I was having this conversation with somebody about Bo Nix the other day. And they're saying, Bo Nix is the greatest quarterback to ever play at Oregon. I was like, okay, I, I can. And, and you know, he was being a little bit gregarious. Let's put it that way. I said, let's, let's not. Is he phenomenal? Yes. But like I said, there have been quarterbacks that have won the Pac-12 championship, multiple, you know, conference championships. There's, there have been quarterbacks that have, uh, that have won the Heisman Trophy. There have been quarterbacks that have taken their team to the national championship games. All of those things are still possible, and all of those things are are more than possible. They they look to be likely if they continue to play this way. But until they do, I think you it's too it's premature to have those conversations, right? This is um. What my friend uh, Aaron Fentress always likes to use the term recency bias, right? Mm. This is like the extreme of recency bias. This is like last Saturday bias. Like, oh my God, they were so good. They're the best ever. Like, let's just take a step back. Could they be? Absolutely they could be. But there's still a couple things that they have to accomplish. Joey, you are Oregon through and through. You were from here. You've seen some of the all-time greats. You've experienced it. You've been around it. You've heard of it. And with what Bo Nix is doing and now being one of the front runners for the Heisman trophy, where does Bo stack up in the conversation of all time Oregon duck quarterbacks? And do you feel like he should win the Heisman? Well, um, you know, I think, like I said, the two year stretch that Bo has had specifically this, this second year is, as good as any quarterback in, in school history. I mean, that's, that's an undeniable fact. Where does he stack up? Um, I think the next one, you know, potentially three games will determine that. I mean, that, that's, that's the, that's the truth. I mean, there is a list of guys, like I said, there's a list of guys that have accomplished incredible things. Danny O'Neill taking Oregon to the Rose Bowl and winning a conference championship. Myself and Darren Thomas winning multiple conference championships. Darren T- Thomas taking Oregon to their first national championship game. Justin Herbert, you know, it, it's so funny. We look at Justin Herbert in his NFL career, like, <laughs> you know, he took the team to a Rose Bowl. Marcus Mariota is literally the pinnacle of, of Oregon football. Like, that is it. Heisman Trophy winner. Took the team to the national championship. Um if I remember correctly, multiple conference championships. I think he won his freshman and junior year. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, but again, like the the football that Bo has played this year, if it continues on that trajectory, very well could put him at the top of that class. Should he win the Heisman? You know, would I vote for him? Absolutely, I would. Um, because not because I'm biased, but because of the week in week out consistency and what he has meant to his team in terms of success on the field. No, th- this is not a, a team award, right? There are team components to it. And especially, you know, the last call it 20 years, it's become more and more the best player on the best team, but we've seen, We've seen quarterbacks, we've seen players win the Heisman with three and four lost seasons, um, Lamar Jackson at Louisville. Um, but I think for me, Jaden Daniels, if you're comparing him to Bo Nix, has he had a superior statistical season? Potentially. But the award is for the most outstanding player, right? Not for the one with the biggest numbers. And what Bo has done for his team and the way in which he has done it, literally every single snap of every single game, I don't know that there's been a quarterback, or I don't know there's a player in college football that has been better from start to finish. So if he does win and they do end up in the college football playoff, um, I think we're having a a conversation here about uh, – 
what's the, I won't call it a Rushmore, but I think we're having that conversation with Bo. But um, again, like the team, it's going to depend on these next couple weeks. My last question for you, Joey, and it's on Bo Nix as well. You just, you know the game, you see the game differently than most of us. You've been in those shoes. I mean, even down to having the billboard up in New York, um, Bo has gone through that this year, the the campaign that the school is putting on behind him. And what have you thought about the way that, that Bo has handled all of that and what makes him so special when you watch him on TV? I don't know that there's anybody who's handled it better. Literally in the history of um, of this Heisman campaign, I the way that he has gone about his business without once without once wavering like look at like seriously go back and watch these games with the exception of maybe a couple drives against washington state um you know there were a couple moments against texas tech you know even one of his interceptions was a ball that hit a guy in the face right Mm -hmm. um like that type of pressure usually breaks people that, or at the very least, you know, causes them to dip, causes them to to falter, causes them to, to, to stub their toe. From the moment Bo stepped on the field at the start of the season to where he is right now, not only has he not faltered, not only has he not stubbed his toe, but he's continued to get better. Like, that is just absolutely astounding. Like you said, I, I know the pressure that, that goes with being put on a billboard in New York city. I mean, you literally have the weight of the world sitting on your shoulders and you can say, Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in the back. It's constant. Like people are constantly bringing it up. Um, And I've told people like, you have to be able to silo all those feelings and all that information and just focus on what is in front of you. And the way that he has done that every single week this year is absolutely astounding. I mean, I'll be like, there were weeks when I stumbled (laughs) during my senior year after that. There was absolutely weeks where I felt that pressure. Um, Bo hasn't even flinched. And it's like, I am, I'm absolutely astounded. He is Joey Harrington, Oregon Ducks legend. Thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time, man. Oh, it was a pleasure, buddy. Great to talk to you.